Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we'll be learning how to draw a 2x2 table. It is a relatively easy topic but it covers a vast majority of public health sciences and various other subjects. In addition to that, it helps us assort all of our given data so that we can come to an easy conclusion. So basically it is used to summarize epidemiological data and the relationship between various variables. So we should go on and learn how to draw a 2x2 table step by step. Step 1. Draw a table that has two rows and two columns. Step number 2. Put a positive sign on top of the first column and on the left side of the first row. Likewise, put a negative sign on top of the right column and on the left side of the lower row. It should look something like this. So we have completely drawn a 2x2 two two table. Now, to understand what type of information goes in which column or row, we should move on to our next slide. So the plus and the minus sign on top of the column represents the reality or the cold hard facts or whatever that is real or it may denote the standard values or the standard test against which we are comparing our measured values. It can also denote if the patient has the disease or not. It is not necessary that these boxes have numerical values. They can even have a yes or no or simply plus minus. Meanwhile, the plus and the negative sign on the left side of the 2x2 two two table denotes the result of the test that we performed or it can even indicate the presence of a risk factor or an exposure to the risk factor if there has been an exposure or if there hasn't been an exposure. So for example, if we are performing a survey in people above 60 years old to find out if they have gastric carcinoma or if smoking plays a role in that gastric carcinoma, we can use our top plus and minus signs above our columns to denote the presence or absence of gastric carcinoma and we can use the left positive and negative signs to denote the presence or absence of exposure to the carcinogens in the cigarette smoke. So I have tried to list some of the uses of the 2x2 two two table. It is used to calculate risk. As I have already stated the example, if cigarette smoke is involved in the development of gastric carcinoma or not. It can also be used to compare new diagnostic tests with the previous ones or with the gold standard. For example, we have developed a new test that can identify and compare them with the standard value from the gold standard test to check the validity of our test. Thus, we can check the validity of the new techniques and how we will find that out later. We can also see if our treatment is efficient. We can check the sensitivity and specificity, the positive predictive value and the negative predictive value or even solve problems. I will show you an example just in a while. So here is one example. I have written a statement which has all the data in it and we will sort that data out and put it in their respective boxes in the 2x2 two two table. So a survey was conducted for breast cancer in postmenopausal women. Among 5,000 that tested positive, 2,500 actually had the disease. 3,000 women tested negative, among which 2,500 had the disease. Draw a 2x2 two two table with the data above. So look at all the values and just understand what they are trying to say. So among 5,000 that tested positive, it means that 5,000, we have 5,000 positive tests. So the first row denotes the positive sign on the left side of the first node denotes all the positives we got from the test that we performed. 
So among 5,000 that tested positive, I have written 5,000 on the right side in front of the first row. So it means that we have 5,000 positive tests. Moving on, 2,500 actually had the disease. It means that the 2,500 are known to have that disease. And the first column, the positive sign above the first column represents the actual state, the reality, the hard facts. So we know that the both positives match each other. So we can write 2,500 there. So moving on, 3,000 women tested negative. It means we have 3,000 negative tests. So I have written 3,000 in front of the lower row because we have 3,000 negative tests among which 2500 had the disease again we have got the actual fact that which patients had the disease so we know 2500 had the disease and we will write that under the positive column because in reality these patients have the disease but our test is stating our new diagnostic test is stating that they don't have the disease so they will be placed in the first column and the second row under the positive marked column and in front of the negative marked row. You can easily understand that by basic arithmetics, we can calculate the rest of the data because there is nothing else that is given. So as we know that the total positive tests we have are 5,000 and 2,500 are the one that are actually positive so the rest will be 2500 obviously and if we move forward we know that 3000 tests are negative but among those 3000 negative tests 2500 actually have the disease so they are not really negative so 3000 minus 2500 we get 500 so another way to look at this and what makes it so useful is that we can categorize these boxes according to the data they hold. So the 2500 in the first column in the first row is true positive because our test told us that these patients have the disease and they actually had the disease so they are true positive. Moving on in the second row first column it is false negative. The amount is false negative because our test told us that these patients do not have the disease but they actually do have the disease because they are under the first positive column. So our standard test shows us or the reality shows us that they do have the disease. So we put them in false negative because they are not negative. This is the mistake. This is a mistake on part of our test, diagnostic test. Moving on, the 2500 in the second column, first row is false positive because our test told us that this, these 2500 patients are positive. They have the disease, but they don't actually have the disease because the negative sign on top of that second column tells us the reality so that negative sign is telling us that our test is lying this is not the actual value so we write false positive and finally the 500 word is the true negative so as our test told us that 3000 tested negative but only 500 were actually negative according to the reality so they are the true negative 500 people were the true negative. So I hope it all made sense. And other important thing to know about this is that true positive is also referred to as the power of the test. It makes sense because true positive. Uh, we have made a new technique, new diagnostic test, and we are trying to see if it is if it will be useful in the future or not so we know the standard values we know the reality if this patient has the disease or doesn't have the disease and then we test these patients with our diagnostic tests and we find out that 2500 of those people who actually had the disease 
or diagnostic test was successful in detecting disease in those 2500 people so this will be the power of the disease hopefully it was all very clear to you and don't worry if you don't know the words sensitivity specificity or positive predictive value or negative predictive value which i listed in my uses list because I will be covering these topics with an interesting concept in my next video. So wait for my next video and don't forget to like, share or subscribe. I drop two videos per week. So make sure to press the bell icon so you can be notified whenever I drop those videos. So take care. Bye bye.